Hey, what's up guys? Casey with Zone for Geeks, and today we're going to be looking at the Gigabit H110M motherboard. This is a micro ATX board that fits the LGA1151 sockets. That's going to be the sixth generation of Intel sockets, I believe. Um, this is a no frills motherboard. I picked it up for $39.99 uh, right around Christmas on Amazon. So it's not going to have a bunch of bells and whistles. This motherboard is actually going to be used in a media center PC. Um, so I didn't really need a lot of the, uh, the gaming aspects that you might find on an enthusiast motherboard. So with that said, let's go ahead and open it up. We have the I.O. plate, nothing fancy. Put that off the way. We have, looks like, two SATA cables. One being a 90 degree for uh, easier cable management. We have our motherboard, of course. We'll put this out of the way for just a moment. And then underneath it, we have the instruction manual as well as the uh, installation disk with the drivers that we are going to need. So let's go ahead and take a look at the motherboard. So as I said, there's really nothing special about this board. Um, picked it up for just a few bucks on Amazon. Let's see what we got here. So we have one PCIe 3.0 at 16 times, uh, and then we have two PCIe uh, 2.0. So it's important to realize that if you're running a larger graphics card, you may actually cover up one of the uh, PCIe slots. So that may only leave you with just one available slot. You get two DIMM slots. This does fit uh, 60, no, 32 gigabytes of memory. However, according to the uh, memory list on Gigabit's website, uh, there's only three compatible sticks or brands that you can buy. Uh, both of them, or all of them, are running at 2400 megahertz, uh, but they get downgraded to 2133. So my recommendation is to stick with something that's uh, about 8 to 16, uh, with two channel, obviously, dual channel, obviously. Uh, if you actually need or want 32 gigabits, uh, or 30, yeah, 32 uh, gigs, I would definitely move on to a, uh, uh, a better board than what you're going to get here. Now this does have two fan headers, one here right above the CPU and one here. If you're going to need more than that, of course, you will need to have some type of Molex connector in order to uh, get them to run. I'm actually, the case I'm going to be using uh, supports up to four, I believe it's 80 millimeter fans. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that. Uh, I guess I'll just have to wait until I actually start building it to make that decision. We have, of course, two DIMM slots and our uh, sockets right here. This is the Intel LGA1151. Uh, and then there's really nothing else to it. Uh, important to real, to uh, mention, there is no built-in Wi-Fi on this, so you will need to use one of the available uh, PCIe 2.0 slots if you're going to be running Wi-Fi. There is no M.2, um, which Wi-Fi can use, uh, so you won't be able to use that for Wi-Fi or for um, storage if you were going with an M.2 SSD. So looking at the available I.O., we have two PS2 slots. I'm not really sure why they gave us two. Most uh, motherboards now give you just a single one for either keyboard or mouse, but they made their decision. Um, you have the HDMI. This is a 1.4 version. You have uh, two USB 3.0s, and then you have four USB 2.0s. You have the gigabit uh, Ethernet adapter, and then you have your three audio jacks. Over here, you have your uh, header connections for your front I.O., um, as well as your um, USB and audio if you're going to be using that. Of course, you have your 24-pin uh, um, power connector and then your USB 3.0 connector right here. 
So that's pretty much it for this build, or for this board, I should say. If you guys like this video, please do not forget to subscribe, leave me a comment below. And if you want to see this uh, motherboard in action, probably in the next week to two weeks, I will go ahead and get this, uh, this build started and I'll put that online. Something I should also mention, um, I am running this on a Windows 7, or I plan to run this on a Windows 7 Media Center. Um, this board does not easily work with Windows 7. It has to do with the USB 2.0 um, drivers. There is information on Gigabit's website on actually how to do this. Um, it is only if you're going to be installing Windows 7 and only via USB. If you plan on using disk drive, you will not have uh, a problem with it. I will be actually using USB, so I will probably document uh, the steps that I take to get Windows 7 to actually work on this motherboard. So once again, please leave me a comment below and thanks for watching.